Hey entrepreneurs, your challenge this week is to get smarter with your decisions by having a shorter feedback loop between making this the decision and then getting some feedback about, was that the right decision? So they say hindsight's 2020, but I'd say the real key here is captured by the psychologist and philosopher, John Dewey, who is um, quoted saying that uh, we don't actually learn from experience, we learn from reflecting on experience. And so I wanna suggest that you use something like this. This is something that I use frequently. Actually, I use it every day. And this is what it looks like on the inside. And so what you're gonna do is you're going to write down one decision that you made on this date for this, this year. That same day next year, you're gonna see the, dis you're gonna write your next decision on that date here. And you're gonna look back and you're gonna reflect on that decision I made to hire that one guy instead of the other. Did it turn out the way I expected? What can I learn from that? You're pausing to reflect on what your decision was and how it actually turned out when you're trying to decide should i should i close down this business and invest all my energy in that one you want to capture those things but then you also want to capture the small things like i decided to invest you know, ten thousand dollars to uh in this course so i could learn this um youtube advertising strategy did that end up being a good choice or did it end up being a poor choice what we're doing is we're creating that feedback loop so this is how we get intelligent is through creating feedback loops Michio Kaku was the first one to expose me to this concept that intelligence really is about how well you're able to generate a rich mental map of the future that allows you to create a rich mental simulation of how various decisions that you make, how you play your cards will turn out. In the, and of course, the further out we go, the harder it is to make accurate predictions. And that's why uh, Nick Peterson, one of the people that I learned from, says, uh, you know, what you want to do is get time and randomness. Those two players, you want them on your team and you want to engineer luck by putting yourself in a position where however reality plays out, randomness and time are going to pass and stuff is going to happen that sometimes is not what you expected. You've created maximum optionality. That's also the, the last step in uh, Chip and Dan Heath's suggestion from their book when they did a deep dive and studied this and they wrote a book called Decisive, this process for decision making. They recommend that you, you go through this process of first widening your options. Make sure you're not making that common mistake that we tend to make where uh, we, we get dichotomous. We're thinking it's either or instead of recognizing there's often various gradients that we should consider when making options. So first, you just widen your options and then achieve some, some uh, actually the second step is to do some reality testing. Just get some feedback to make sure you're, you're even close to recognizing reality the way it should be. For example, uh, Chip and Dan Heath used the example that you, you wouldn't want to go on American Idol thinking you, you might win when you haven't checked with people to find out if you even have an ear for music, right? You don't, you don't want to be one of those people that goes viral because you didn't check. You didn't even realize that you don't even have an ear for music. And then uh, the third step is to achieve distance. And of course, that's something pretty much everybody knows. You should sleep on a decision, get some distance from it before you make it because that allows you to see things from a different perspective. But that last step, is plan to be wrong. And that's the thing that most people, when they, they shorten the feedback loop and they actually slow down to think about their decisions, that's the place where most humans accelerate and improve in their decision-making the fastest is actually recognizing that they have a tendency to be too certain about their predictions. And so this is actually a superpower for entrepreneurs. To, you, you might think of it as, oh, Todd's a downer. He's like trying to get us to think about plan B is I just want to be the kind of guy that burns the boats and just goes all out for my goals. That's okay to rev yourself up to go after goals. And sometimes we need to engage in that kind of uh, psychological warfare within our own mind to ensure that we're not having an internal civil war, but instead we're completely uh, all 100% behind one direction that we've chosen. There's some power in that, but at the planning stage, at the decision, at the learning stage, at the getting better at making decisions and prediction stage, we want to reflect on the possibility that we'll be wrong. And if you look at people who can get rapid feedback in research studies, one of the things that often improves is people's capacity to anticipate that they might be wrong. World-class uh, stock market traders, same thing. They're often able to simultaneously have a conviction about what they think the market's going to do, but also have a plan B in their mind acknowledging that there's a high likelihood that their prediction is incorrect. And so being ready for that, being able to plan for that is one of the things that tends to improve. And that feedback loop is possible only when you 
for complex systems, I should say. It's only possible in these complex systems, like decision-making and entrepreneurship, where there's all of these thousands of variables you're trying to take into account. It's only possible if you slow down enough to actually have a system for getting feedback and reflecting on the decisions that you've made. So that's your challenge this week. I challenge you to find some sort of system, whether it's just once per month, you're gonna think about all the decisions you made in the past month, or if it's gonna be daily like I do, just record one simple decision and then you turn the page, or actually on that same page, you're gonna see the decisions you made in prior years. And you're gonna sit there for just a minute and think, hmm, did it turn out the way I expected? What can I learn from that? Where was I overconfident? Where did I underestimate my strengths or my skills? Uh, which people ended up coming through in a way that I didn't anticipate? And what was it about their personality traits or early signs that now I can be more tuned into? This is my challenge for you this week as an entrepreneur to expand your intelligence, your the richness of your mental model for your own decision-making capacity by, by closing the gap, by having more feedback. Hope that's useful to you. I'll see you again next week.